Good afternoon and welcome to Manitowoc Lincoln High School for today's divisional Division I sectional championship game between the De Pere Redbirds and the Marquette University Hilltoppers. Alongside studio engineer Paul Roop and color man Jordan Lorenz, my name is Mark Mino and I'm honored to bring you today's game live from the Nicolay Bank broadcast booth. Well, 6-0 is the goal for the postseason and so far so good for Coach Brian Winchester and the Redbirds as they're coming off a sectional semifinal win on Thursday over Homestead, 82-53, as the Birds jumped out to a 14-point halftime lead and pulled away in the second half for the 29-point win. Will Hornseth had a huge night for the Redbirds as he's finished with 30 points in the game. Zach Kinzinger had 21, and his brother John had an awesome all-around game with 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. The Pierce started off a little slow on the offensive end, but their defense helped fuel their offense as they slowly started to pull away from Homestead. Prior to that, Tapir had an easy time as they cruised to the regional title with convincing wins over Sheboygan South, 87-34, and Milwaukee King, 81-34. The Redbirds come in today's game averaging 76 points per game while giving up only 44. For veteran coach Casey Kovaleski and Marquette, the Hilltoppers were co-champs of the Greater Metro Conference this year, sharing top honors with Sussex Hamilton with 13-3 records. 21 and 6 overall, Marquette is battle tested from quality competition in the Great Metro Conference, including Sussex Hamilton, Tosa West, Brookfield Central, and Germantown. Marquette had defeated Green Bay Southwest 80 to 58 in the regional opener before downing Fond du Lac in a shootout 87 80 for the regional crown. They handled a good Kakana team in the sectional semifinals 67 40 on Thursday to set up today's contest. Nolan Minasali has been great for the Hilltoppers in the postseason as he has been averaging 22 points per game. The Toppers are led in scoring by dynamic junior Nolan Minasali, a springy 6'5 wing who averages 23 points per game. T.J. Adams, a 6'2 junior, drops 13 per game, and Ryan Meehan, a 6'3 junior, contributes 12 points per game. Marquette runs pretty much a 5-0 motion as their primary offense as they do like to get out and go, and they love to shoot to three as they average 70 points per game while giving up 61 points per game. Starters for tonight's ball game. First, starting with Marquette, number two, Nolan Lasalle, a 6-5 junior at 22.9 points per game. Number 20, T.J. Adams, a 6-2 junior, averages 13 per game. 24, Ryan Meehan, a 6-3 junior, averages 11.7 Number five, Jeremiah Johnson, a 6'2 sophomore, averages 6.5 per game. And rounding out the starters for Marquette, number 33, Luke Novotny, a 6'5 senior, averages 4.2 points per game. For the Redbirds, number one, John Kinzinger, a 6'0 senior, averages 18.8 points per game. His brother, Zach, 6'4, excuse me, a 6'2 junior, wearing number four, averages 15.5 per game. 6'8", Will Hornseth, wearing number 13. He is a junior at 16.8 points per game. Number 2, Gabe Herman, a 6'2", senior, averages 3.7. And Hogan Domofsky, wearing number 10, a 6'2", senior, averages 5.6 per game. Officials for today's contest are Justin Intenbrock, G. Lee, and Dan Millerin. So 3-0 uh, is, the, is the record right now for DePere Jordan. And I know we had a couple of games earlier in the regional round, and certainly De Pere got the work done today. So what are you seeing from your chair as far as keys for a potential Redbird win today? Yeah, so I think it's all about defending that dynamic duo that Marquette has. Minasali, through the three playoff games, he's got 67 points, 23 boards, and 10 assists. And then TJ Adams, 57 points for him, 18 assists for Adams, a 6'2 junior. Both of those players are juniors. They still have another year ahead of them, which is a big key for this Marquette team who's coming off a loss to Lincoln last year. That game was at Marquette, but now they're playing at Lincoln High School, so you know they'll have that in the back of their mind. De Pere, FRCC team, they've played the ships many of times. They're playing in this gym once again. I don't think that's going to let them phase them at all. They've got three players, obviously. Their trio is a big one. you got Hornseth, who has led the way 64 points in the playoffs. Johnny Kinzinger, Zach Kinzinger, 56 points each. That's the trio that De Pere needs to rely on, and it's that veteran experience from John Kinzinger. This is his last year. Back-to-back -back sectional final losses to Menominee Falls by four and River Falls by one. We talked about it before we went on. John Kinzinger, the senior, his experience, he is not going to let this team lose here tonight. And if they can defend Minasali, if they can defend Adams, and if they can play that Redbird defense that we've seen all year long, I don't see De Pere having problems getting through and making their way to Camp or Madison, I should say, at the Kohl Center. Certainly, we are locked and loaded here and getting ready for tip-off. And we're going to step away for a couple of seconds 
as we take care of the national anthem and starting lineups. And the game day staff from Manitowoc doing a great job of making a couple of announcements to get the students and the parents involved by turning on their cell phones and turning the lights off. A couple of special effects lights on the court, making it that much more special for this big time matchup here today. We talked a little bit about pregame. Certainly Marquette likes to get up and down the floor. And for reference, they have put up 683 three-point shots already this season and by comparison to Piers attempted 486 so one of the concerns for coach Brian Winchester was definitely taking care of of those perimeter shooters Jordan right getting out getting some hands and certainly with De Pierre and their their defensive pressure um, he thinks that they're in pretty good shape from a matchup standpoint and certainly taking care of the leading scorer. So we'll see how that plays out here today. Yeah, it appears one of the best defensive teams in the state. I mean, you've got the Steels racking up. Their defense is just absolutely sensational. They played Milwaukee King in that playoff game, and King hung in there with them for the first seven, eight minutes of that game, but then ultimately it was 81-34, part of back-to-back -back running clock regionals. But ultimately, Milwaukee King, Marquette, two vastly different teams. Marquette, even though they come in this as the seven seed, completely forget about their mm -hmm. seeding. They have beat some very quality teams this year, including beating the number two seed Fond du Lac in right. that regional game, 87-80. That was a big key, and I think that got people thinking a little bit more about these Hilltoppers who have really struggled the last five seasons, their combined record, yeah. 57 and 64. They just have not been good these past few years. Very mediocre. After they mm -hmm. made it to state in 2015, 2016, they were 23 and 4 that year. Ultimately lost to Muskego by eight in the first day of state. But nonetheless, Marquette, they're coming in with a chip on their shoulder. They know De Pierre's undefeated. They know they're the number one team in the state. And now they try and they're going to try and get over that hump as they get introduced. Obviously, fan-wise, what we've seen so far. De Pierre, they have dominated. They're a little <laughs> bit louder. There's a whole lot more of them here. But Marquette, we'll see what they can get mustered up, and we'll see how they come out here in these first few minutes. Yep, De Pierre student section decked out in some festive pink. I'm not exactly sure how that drew the uh, popular vote. 
nevertheless, they I mean, are. Sometimes you vote. <laughs> sometimes they yeah. put up a few options and you vote. Maybe they just haven't done pink in a while. You never know, but it looks cool. Yep. You know, you kind of hit on a couple of things around appear taking away uh, the other team's best player, and you said point, you know, point taken, um, you know, even from this past, you know, regional crown, right, when they played William Horton, who's a 6'8 senior from Milwaukee King. He's heading to South Dakota State, averages just under 19 per game. They held him to two. Um, and they've done that throughout the course of the year. Basically, Zach Kinzinger, I would probably – guess is he will draw uh, the first opportunity with Minnesota here today and see if he can get into get into him defensively and take away that strength. So we are set for tip up here as the fans student section certainly is up and bouncing as you can probably see from from that screen. Hopefully they don't break those bleachers. Those things are bouncing up and down. Yeah, and you can probably see from our our look on the <clears throat> on the huddle cam is that we've got a little difficulty showing you the time, and I will do my best to bring you how much time is left here as we progress in the game. DePierre wins jump ball. John grabs it on top, swings it over to Will, dump down to Will real quick. Nice block by Minasali as he knocks that ball, and they're going to call that off of DePierre. Well, what a start. Clearly yep. a drawn-up play to Hornseth, mm -hmm. and Minasali, who we did not expect <clears throat> to be the big defensive presence, he was all up in there, and that's a huge block for the 6'5 junior. Mm -hmm. And again, Marquette starting off in that motion. Adams toying with John in the corner. A lot of contact so far on mm -hmm. these screens. It's going to be a very physical game that the players are going to have to put up with. There's a big-time three. Adam lines up a three, no good. Ball tipped around a little bit. Hornseth comes away with it. John on the push as the pier goes left to right from our vantage point. Zone defense here from Arquette that De is able to attack. Oh. oh. Zach with a nice dump off to Will, and he goes up strong. He's going to draw the foul, and that one is going to be on. Uh, Novotny, 33. Novo okay, thank you. I could not quite see. We had a little ref reflection here is from our broadcast booth. We've got windows in front of us, so there's a little bit of glare, so we may not pick all of it up as Will rims the first one in and out. There you wonder about some early on nerves, obviously playing in a big crowd. Will shoots it at about 65% from the line. And he splits him as the birds strike first. 17 to play here first half. Meehan corner gets over to Minasali as he drives left, comes down low. Will sends that one out. That ball's going to get tipped off of a hilltopper. As the Redbirds are going to take position as Minnesali showing that athleticism, getting to the rim, but Will decided that he did not want that attempt to get any closer to the rim and sent that one out. Yeah, who knew that was going to be the matchup to watch. Minnesali mm -hmm. and Hornseth both now have a block against each other. Marquette wanted a carry. And you're going to see them double and front that post with Will, so it's going to make some of those opportunities open for perimeter shooters on weak side. As Gabe Herman settles into a long three. Bingo, right in front of the Marquette student section. Birds, 4-0, closing in on 16 to play here first half. Also, there is a big mismatch down low with Johnson, 6-2 sophomore guarding Hornseth. <clears throat> he was able to set a screen, got Herman open, and now DePierre, or Marquette, I should say, looking to just get something on the board. Minasali mid-post. There you see that athleticism. His nice spin drive gets by Zach, and he knocks that one off the backboard for his first two and Marquette's first two. 4-2 Redbirds, 15-40 to play first half. Nothing you can do there if you're DePier. There's no backside mm -hmm. help. Minnesali, just a picture-perfect move, showing why he averages over 22 points a game. They did switch now. Hornseth down low. Johnson's helping, and they got Novotny on him. Mm -hmm. Novotny does have a foul. Keep that in mind. You see John getting inside the lane. They're going to get a foul. Ooh. It was May a high official that yeah. called it as well, which I found interesting. Yeah, one on the baseline didn't see anything, but it looks like he may have gotten him on the arm.
Johnson picks up that one as we're going to have a replay. And you can decide for yourself as John knocks down the first one. John at 95% from the line, so he is pretty much automatic as far as free throws go. It's pretty good, I would say. There you go. 6-2 birds closing in on 15 to play here first half. And again, we apologize for the scoreboard blockage. There is a basketball hoop right in our way. So, again, you can probably see the score from your vantage, but that's about it. And we're going to have a 30-second time. Oh, eh, I believe so. Well? I don't know what happened. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe the official thought he signaled for a timeout or he was calling his half-court set. So, no timeout. We are back to action. Tough check by Hogan Ooh. on Minasali as Will gets in the way on that slip and forces a terminal and comes away with the steal. John, quick pass ahead to Gabe. That's a tough pass to make. Oh, Two-handed, yeah. three-quarters of the yep. way down the court. Boy, near looking for that high-low big time. As Will gets loose and lays that one off the backboard. Nice high-low feed from Gabe Herman, and Will has got three for his first bucket. Marquette's got to find their identity on defense. They're switching constantly. They were in a zone for a bit, and then they went back to man as they just got to try and get a stop to this DePierre squad. There's an open three. Johnson open corner. That one's no good. John snatches that rebound, and he's on the push right down the middle of the floor between the wheels. And he's going to kind of get a little bit out of control. There's He had maybe a little bit easier take. I think he maybe passed up the layup looking for Gabe in the corner and just fired that one out of bounds. Turnover Redbirds. That is one of the things about De Pere, though. They always make the extra pass. There's mm -hmm. no one selfish on the team. John especially, he will make that pass nine times out of ten. Definitely could have gone up on that one, yep. but he'll learn and he'll move forward. Minasali coming off a nice little brush screen. Kicks out to Adams. Three-pointer is no good. Battle for the rebound. Will comes away with it. Over to Hogan, over to Zach as he pushes right side. John coming off that curl cut. Zach is going to get a call for the travel as he shot fake and went right, but he did pick up his pivot foot. Second turnover early for it appear. And here's where Marquette has to take advantage. Mm -hmm. That's back-to-back -back turnovers now against the Redbirds, and the Hilltoppers have yet to come up with anything. They got the two points for Minnesota early on, but their offense has struggled to get moving parts and open shots. Meehan brings it to the right wing. Quick zip pass down low to Johnson as he's quickly doubled and looks for bailout to Minasali in the corner. Yeah, Johnson's got to go up with that immediately. Three and he is good right in front of the pier student section as Minasali gets on the board. 8-5 birds, 13 minutes to play here first half. First substitution will be coming in. and It'll be Gregory soon here for DePier. Looks like they're going to get one more guy up as well. Tomofsky tied up on top. Will gives him a little relief. And we're looking high, low. Will was thinking it was going to be a little bit that longer on that one. Zach and then get there. we turn over on Gabe as the Hilltoppers come away with that. Dump down Novotny. Nice layoff by Jeremiah Johnson to Novotny as Novotny gets into the scoring column. 8-7 to Pierre. 12 and a half to play here first half. That's three straight turnovers mm -hmm. now for the Redbirds, and finally Marquette puts back-to-back -back buckets together. They're only within one. They're hanging in it. And there we have a little bit of a hold, and I think Navani's going to pick up his second. Yeah, yeah that's he, not good. He grabbed him good as Will got the good pin down, and certainly no way to get around that as he's going to be taking a seat here is my guess. Yep. yep. Had Hoffman in for him, and it was also Ethan Ramos along with Gregory checking in. Herman Domofsky take a seat as it appears inbounds. They need something. As Will's going to get in middle, and he's going to go up strong, and that ball tips around. John keeps it alive, pulls on a rebound, and he's going to get tied up on that offensive rebound. We're going to have a jump ball, and that possession is going to go to Marquette. Marquette now with a chance to take their first lead of the game. Mm -hmm. Their defense has really poured on lately, and I don't know what's going wrong for DePierre. They started off looking really good, and now lately their offense has just gone stale. 
I'm getting after Will a little bit on that low block. Looks like he just kind of lost that ball going on the way up. And they're also forcing it inside mm -hmm. to Will as well. You don't have to live and die by Will Hornseth. They've had plenty of players step up. Remember, Zach Kinzinger had 18 points in the first half of the first regional. Just because that's your game plan, you don't have to stick with it fully as we got a foul going the other way. Yeah, Gregory got cleared out. Uh, Ryan Meehan's going to pick that one up as he threw him to the ground. That's four early fouls against this team. That's going to be the first on Meehan. As Johnson picks up John, little token pressure. It's a high screen from Will as John snaps off a three. Got it. That's got to feel good for John as he knocks down his first perimeter shot. Birds up 11. Minasali is going to pick up a foul as John got in his way. And that is going to be Minasali's first foul as they are quickly getting into a little bit of foul trouble. They've got five fouls already. And we are not even halfway through the first half. Thankfully for them, they are spreading it mm -hmm. out. Minasali, Johnson, Miano with one. Novotny has the two. But there, Minasali, he knew what he was doing all the way. He was going to dribble in and kick it out. Yep. But he overcommitted. And that's just great defense as, once again, DePierre kind of ran that same thing. Zach, long three from 26 as Will tracks down the long offensive rebound and DePierre will reset. He was so open. He could have taken two mm -hmm. dribbles and then put that one up. But a little heat check nonetheless. John gets loose inside the lane. They're going to get him for an offensive foul. As I'm sure Paul Roop is going to queue up that replay, and that's going to be John's first to Piers first. Herman will check back in. He mm -hmm. only sat for a minute and a half maybe as Hornseth yep. takes a seat. Now this is big for Marquette mm -hmm. defensively, not having to worry about the big man. Yeah, probably looked like defender was there, so good call. Ramos doing a good job of Minasali as Johnson gets loose a little up and under as Zach knocks that one out of the way. Johnson's going to corral. Ooh, and we are going to have a foul as they're going to get Gabe Herman maybe for a grab on Johnson. I think they're going to say he hooked his arm a yep. little bit when he went down for that loose ball. Herman disagreed, but that is the call. And that's his first, team second. We're ten and a half here to play first half. Birds with a four-point lead, 11-7. They really got Minasali on a little pin down as he overlays that one, had a point-blank opportunity, and John comes away with that tip rebound. Zach had a hand in there. It did enough to make the Minasali, who's got five points already, come up with the miss. Mm-hmm. Appear going to just run their offense right now as Marquette staying in man. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> John, a little shot fake. Minasali got past him, and he got in for the easy layup as John is up to seven. Johnson with horrific defense, had mm -hmm. his back to Kinzinger. Johnny knew it the whole way and just took it right to the hoop. Minasali, a nice spin move inside, and he is up to seven. It's tough to stop. Mm -hmm. He is showing why he's up there among the best players, not only in the greater Metro, but great defense and made it through. As here's a three-pointer. Zach front rims that one no good. Minasali quickly underneath. He goes up strong baseline and puts that one in, and he is up to nine on a quick run out here on the left baseline and went and got past Zach. He's got nine of their 11 and while it is a good thing, it also could be a bad thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. to Pier, Coach Winchester, they're going to figure them out. They're going to oh, yeah. double them. They're going to work their way around. Could find down low. Yep. As John got deep, <laughs> deep underneath on Johnson. That's his second. And literally right underneath the hoop is where he ended up posting him up, and that is going to be Johnson's second. Him and Novotny both with two. I'm assuming Johnson will take a seat for one of these men. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. It's going to be Peter McDevitt and Daniel Tanney coming in. The birds will inbound in front of the hilltopper bench and one four low. Hornseth back in now. See how long it takes for DePierre to use him. Gabe Herman settles into a long three in the corner. No good. John rattles that one, tips it out. 
And Tanti comes away with it as he pushes front court, gets it into the corner to Hoffman. As Adam steps into a three, no good. John with the rebound. Adams ice cold, 0 mm -hmm. for 3 from 3 so far. Not an ideal start for him. And they do not have much of a memory as they will continue to shoot. Shooter shoot. Bad handoff, but yep. the Pierce is going to get away with it. Or are they? And we're going to get a jump ball here. Boy, a little bit of action on that handoff. Thought maybe John got slapped a little bit, but they're going to call a jump ball, and that one is going to stay here with DePier. Zach Kinzinger back in here for mm -hmm. Gregory. Zach has yet to score. Kowalski was all over this inbound play. Yep. He was pointing. They knew it was mm -hmm. going to be a low screen. Mm -hmm. Defended it well. Smart move nice by Zach. Yep. Yeah, it took nice. two dribbles and saw the defense was nice. right there. Nice defense by Tanti cutting off that baseline. Zach is going to make his way in, go strong left hand. He rattles that one in off the window. Under some duress, but gets that one to go, and that is his first basket. This Minnesota is going to reset on top. You need to get a little high ball screen by Hoffman. Adams, there he is, sitting mm -hmm. in the corner. they got to try and get him involved. I know he's missed so far, but this offense cannot just run through Minasali. they got to include Adams. they got to include some of the other key players, Meehan as well. So there's a three from him. Yep, front back rim no good as Gabe Herbing comes away with that one. Maybe a little bit of a settle by Nolan on that opportunity. Certainly good outcome for DePier. Gabe Herman's going to go up strong. He had a really point-blank opportunity. just was strong off the window as Minnesota is getting loose here on the right side. Zach's going to go up and keep him under control. And, oh, boy, That's they gave be Zach second. a second. I think they, get, they did give John that fall. Actually, that one should not be, well, did they? Okay, they did give that one to John. That yeah. is his second. So that's two early fouls. I mean, still under seven left to go. Not the end of the world, but now you just got to trust him to play smart. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want is for Johnny to pick up his third foul in the first half. On the rebound is kind of where it was going. Had a little slap that was more on the arm than the ball. And Sally is going to reset here on top. Give it to Meehan between the rings as he falls down and a little bit of a scrum with that ball as McDevitt comes away with it. Good backdoor cut. Nice backdoor feed. Mm. That's a good follow yep. by Domofsky. Obviously, he didn't know that behind him Hoffman was falling down, but instead of giving up the bucket, why not? Yep. Get your first foul. You got nothing to worry about. Save that layup. Mm -hmm. Make him earn him. As Hoffman's going to get a couple of cracks at it. He's right around 70% from the line on the year. And he back rims and drops that one in for his first point. First free throw shot by Marquette. To appear three of four from the line. 15-12 yep. birds, six and a half to play here first half. And a little bit strong on that one as that comes away with the rebound. John with a deep three. Good. <laughs> Six feet, maybe seven feet out as he knocks that one off of a little bit of a brush screen from his brother, Zach. If you're Marquette, all you can do is mm -hmm. nod your head, tip your cap, whatever you want to say, and move back. That is a tough three-pointer as John now has got ten. Nice job by Hogan locking up Meehan on that right-wing drive. Hogan, tough check there on Minasali as Minasali whip pass right corner. Deep three on the way by Meehan. Back rim, no good. Domofsky is going to grab the rebound. We're going to have a foul on Marquette as John Kinziger hits the floor. And that foul is going to be on Peter McDevitt, I believe. Yeah, that's his first. And that's now that's a bonus. First. Yep, we are in the bonus moving forward. 540 here to play first half. John is going to head the line for some fouls as Gregory checks in for Herman. 
Adams in here for McDermott, who just picked up the foul. We'll see if Adams can finally break that spell and get something going offensively. We'll see if they can get Gregory on track here. He has been big time here in the second half of the season as he's been an integral part of that offense coming in and knocking down threes at will here. So we'll see if we can get Price unlocked as John hits the first free throw. He's in double figures with 11. And four and four. Good on the second. 20 to 12 to Pier. 540 to play here first half. That one looked almost like a double dribble. There was no whistle, maybe on the hesitation. Miss Tanti, Miss Minnesali on that deep curl cut. Is that three on the way by Hoffman, who's no good bounce around the rim a couple of times? Their shots are flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just not good arcing shots. They're not doing anything for Marquette, and they're settling. DePierre starting to get a little more of a lead, up by eight. They're just going to keep it going. There Hogan it is. His first triple. Got it. Feed from Zach. Nice to see Hogan get into the scoring column here early. The Birds have opened up an 11-point lead as we close in on five here to play here for the first half. John's got two threes. Herman has one. Domofsky with one as well. Minasali, nice dump off for Hoffman, who goes up and under and gets that over the outstretch arm of Will Hornseth. And that is his first bucket. Hoffman, a guy that averages five a game. He's got three already. Yep. Someone else having to step up with Meehan and Adams, left with zero so far. High low action to Willis. He's going to get to the spot that he wants with his right hand, and that back rims in and out. No good. Good look. Hoffman comes away with the rebound over to Minnesali as he spin drives, and that ball is a little bit tipped, and it looked like, oh boy, they're going to give John. We're going to get John for his third, as it looked like he went over the back. Yeah, that should have been on Hoffman. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. But John's going to probably sit the rest of the yeah. half as DePierre lets yep. him hear it. Yeah. Coach Winchester really needs an explanation mm -hmm. on that call. He's letting the official hear it, but they caught him. Oh, As Minasali gets a good look at a three right on the inbound, no good. Caught him sleeping. Not good defense at all by DePier, and Minasali doesn't miss those often. Zach settles into a long three. Got it from Damoski. Zach starting to heat up here a little bit. Birds up a dozen, just under four to play here in the first half. Five three-pointers for DePier. Marquette has just one. It's been a big story so far for a Hilltoppers team that loves to shoot. Adams with trying to get that left-hand floater. He's no good as Will with the contest. Uh-oh, Adams is hurt. Hogan Domofsky driving that one. Oh, well, they're going to give him an offensive fall on Hogan as he took it strong to the rim. Certainly good look as we may have his right ankle an of Adams. He has been down for this whole yep. play. And it looks like he's trying to get some pressure on that by retying his shoe. And he looks like he'll be okay. A little shaken up on that. All right, he's going to stay in. Never mind. Kind of taking a peek at that last play. It looks like it was an off. Yeah, looks like it was a good call on, on Hogan with that offensive fall. All right, substitution in McDevitt. Now we're good to go. 3.33 left to go in the first half as Marquette has been stale down a dozen. Oh, Minnesota, nice crossover. Gets into lane, goes up right hand. Rolls around no good as that one would not drop. Will picks that one out of the air. He's complaining to the official. He thought there was a foul. Just got to get back and play. Well, they got a little bit to worry about here if Minnesota's going to be on Will. Definitely get him into the block and see if they can get some opportunities there as Hogan looked at a pr pretty good opportunity to pass that one up. First play of the game, Minnesota mm -hmm. blocked Hornseth, so you know he's still thinking about that one. Zach Rhythm 3 back rims that one no good as Meehan comes away with it over to Minasali right side. Hoffman over to Meehan. His path cut off by Gregory. Nice job by the junior. 
Oh. And Hoffman was looking for Minasali coming out as he was in trouble and throws that one out of bounds as Minasali could not corral it. It's going to be turnover on the Hilltoppers. Marquette's lucky there. Minasali, if his foot wasn't out of bounds, mm -hmm. it would have been an easy transition yep. bucket for the Redbirds. 2.37 to play here in the first half. De Pere 26, Marquette 14. Nice flare screen by Gregory. Zach passing up that opportunity. They continue to switch players yep. defensively because mm -hmm. now you got Minnesali on Zach, and once again, Ooh. it's Hoffman guarding Horn. Nice Seth. curl cut by Domofsky. Got held as he came around that screen. Zach is going to find Gregory in the corner. Good Shot pump. fake, no good. Reloads. Front rim, no good. Wills got it. He goes up. Not coming. No, they the are going to call that one on the ground. But yeah. it is Minnesali's second, and nonetheless, Hornseth will be shooting. Yep. We've got a replay here, so, ooh, boy. That must have been right as he was coming down with the rebound because replay certainly showed maybe a little more contact on the attempt. But Wills at the line here for bonus. And that one goes strong as Minasali tips it away, and that one comes down to Meehan. One of three is Will from the line. He's got three points. Quick whip over to Johnson, left wing. That one's no good game. Herman's got it, and they're going to get Johnson. That's his third. For a grab, and he is got, exactly, he's got his third. As both teams having to dig a little bit deeper into the bench here with some foul trouble here in the first half. As McDevitt's going to check back in and give Minasali a break as he leaves with two. As Gabe Herman is going to head to the line. This a one and one, but afterwards now for the final two minutes, it's double bonus. Back rim strong on that one, no good. As Mian comes away with the rebound. Birds uncharacteristically missing a few from the line here. And that skip pass from Meehan. And Domofsky got his mitts on that one and knocked it out of bounds as Tanti checks back in for Johnson. To appear five of eight from the free throw line to start. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have an offensive foul on McDevitt as he was holding that screen a little bit. Two fouls now on McDevitt, That's, but yeah, as you said, he was just moving on mm -hmm. the screen, and you can't do that. And he probably got his arm into him a little bit. One thirty to play here, first half. Birds by a dozen, 26-14. There's that high-low off of Zach. He goes right hand, no good. K battling as Mian comes away with that rebound. Both teams struggling. We've mm -hmm. been stuck at 26-14 for three minutes now. As Hoffman tries a long three, that ball is tipped around, no good. Domofsky's going to get his hands on it. He comes away with it. Quick look over to Gabe as he goes up right hand strong. Nice play by Hogan Domofsky as he lays that one off to Will, who goes up and knocks that one off the backboard. Birds by 14, under a minute to play here first half. All started with a miscommunication from Marquette. Two guys were going for the ball. They knocked into each other, mm -hmm. and it led into a transition bucket where it appeared at numbers. Good action on oh, both sides. Nice that. slip, yes. No look pass. Hoffman's got five points. Yep. Adams with a good look for Hoffman, and he knocks that one off the window. 30 seconds play, Thirty seconds to play here first half. Birds by a dozen. Zach just over half court. And they're going to quick double him. Quick look to Domofsky. Obviously, De yeah, going to hold for the final shot. Mm -hmm. Probably around 10 seconds. We'll see Zach get ready to go, have a burst of energy, likely get a high ball screen, and go from there. Here it is. That's a foul. But timeout yeah. called by Winchester. All right. Got a little handsy on him, nevertheless. We got a timeout. First one by DePier, I believe. Yep. Yes. And they're going to call a 30 second timeout. Certainly some good end to end action. Kids really getting into it. I love it when the kids get a little chirpy with the officials, kind of making their point.
State Birth is on the line today here from Manitowoc. And we're at 6.4 seconds on the clock. Again, to appear with a 28-16 lead. Not an ideal spot to inbound because you got to get all the way up in five seconds. Zach right down the middle lane, drives and blows by for easy layup as that counts, 30-16. to 16. Zach takes advantage, not really much maybe drawn up out of a timeout other than, hey, Zach, get to the rim and score. As the birds head into intermission, 30 to 16 over Marquette. And we're going to step away here for a couple of seconds as Paul Roop is going to hit mute on the mic, and we'll be back with leading scores and everything else here at halftime.
Welcome back to Manitowoc Lincoln High School. We are at halftime of this Division I sectional final as the pier is up 30-16 to 16 over Marquette. Jordan has some leading scores for both teams and a little analysis of what happened and maybe what we can expect here in the second half. Starting with the seven seed Marquette Hilltoppers. Casey Kowalski, I should say, their head coach. They are led by Minnesali, as expected, nine points for Nolan, the six foot five junior who does have two fouls. Keep that in mind. He doesn't have three like Johnny has on the other side, but Jeremiah Johnson has three fouls for Marquette. Johnson does not have any points. The only other players other than Minnesali on the board with their 16 points are Tad Hoffman, who's got five. He was one of two from the free throw line, the only two free throws Marquette shot in the half. And then Luke Novotny, who picked up two early fouls in this game, he has two points, and he has not played much since he picked up those two. Novotny and McDevitt both with two fouls, along with Minnesali. Meehan has one, and Johnson has three. As for the Redbirds, they have 30 points in the first half. John Kinzinger had 12 of those 30 points. He knocked down two threes, was 4-4 four four from the free throw line, but has those three fouls. He picked up three fouls with just over four minutes left to go in the first half. Remember, you only get five. Seven points for Zach Kinzinger, who has kept scoreless for the first 10 or so, eight, 10 minutes of this game. He knocked down a three, had two other field goals. Will Hornseth, who is just one of three from the free throw line, has five points. And then Gabe Herman and Hogan Domofsky both knocked down threes, counting for the 14-point DePierre lead. And I think fouls are the big key here moving forward mm -hmm. in this second half. Minnesali with two, got to keep that in mind. And obviously, if you're DePierre, try and attack Johnson, Novotny, and McDermott while they're in this game. Try mm -hmm. and do that. And then on the other side, obviously, if you're Marquette, the more fouls Johnny gets, the better you're at. If John Kinzinger fouls out or picks up a fourth foul quick, you know he's going to sit for quite a while, and that is not ideal for DePierre. Their leading scorer with 12 points. Five players have scored for DePierre, just three for Marquette. Meehan and Adams both did not score. That is huge, and that's a big key why Marquette, who has not shot well at all from three. They've only made one three-pointer, and that was Minnesali who did it. If their threes start falling and things get rolling, DePierre could be in a little bit of trouble, and Marquette could be right back in this game. Yeah, and we'll see where that plays out here in the second half. If they do anything special to get John with that fourth fall, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. But certainly DePierre had a little bit extended halftime as they came out maybe with a minute and a half left. We'd just like to quickly thank Redbird sponsors for boys and girls basketball, Exhaust Pros, Green Bay Family Dentistry, Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Bay Care Clinic, Nicolay Bank, Muleman's Electric, Greystone Alehouse, Harmon Studios, Chicago Street Pub, Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin, and Cotter Funeral Home. Would also like to thank this past Thursday as the Bayport Radio folks came over to stream the game against Homestead and a special shout out to Nate Rickle, the head boys basketball coach at Bayport, and Mike Frieder for chipping in and doing the analysis in color. Certainly much appreciated as we are back to action. Clock is rolling. Minnesali gets loose and a nice acrobatic finish and he knocks that one off the window. Gives him 11 here in the first half. He's up to double digits now as he attacked Will Hornseth. That was clearly a drawn up play. Oh boy. Long three by John. Back rim no good. As Novotny comes away with that one. Not the best shot, but John, he's missed playing so he wanted to take advantage. Oh, Nice find by Minnesali and Novotny as he comes up short on that opportunity. John looking to probe middle of the court nothing happening he'll reset that's a real good find mm -hmm. by Minnesali just unable to finish against Hornseth oh there's gonna be a hold on Minnesali as he's gonna pick up his third as he hooked Will as Will was getting him pinned down there right on the block and a half space and he's gonna grab three no argument on that one as he hooked him clearly and he is gonna be at three so a little bit of decision time and Coach Kovaleski says, hey, you're staying on the floor. Yeah, I don't think there's any question mm -hmm. that he's going to stay playing for now. It's only three. He's got two more. Good Nice cut. curl cut by John. Good find by Zach. So John is up to 14. Birds back up 14. 17 to play here in the ballgame. Really, the start of this game was Minnesali versus Kinzinger. Those two kept scoring back and forth, and that's how the second half started. As Minnesali is going to try a long three, and that one is no good. Way off to the right. 
ball tipped out of bounds and possession is going to go to De Pere. Yeah, he was going down the court. He was saying, my bad, my bad. <coughs> yep. As soon as that came out of his hand, he knew because he was and following his shot and then just right off the hand of Novotny. Yep, and I don't think he probably wanted to take that. He maybe said, hey, let's get a shot fake and maybe get to the rim. Get that curl by Will here. Yep, they've been running that action. They usually get some high-low at. There was nothing there. Trying to get it yep. to Will. And they're going to front that post. Good job by DePierto not forcing it because at the start of the game, they were really living and dying by Hornseth down low. As Zach gets ooh, loose, a little ooh. nifty up and under, a little shift, and he gets by Johnson. And we're going to have a timeout by Marquette as they're hoping to put a little bit of a plug in this water leak as the birds are up 16 with 16 minutes to play here in the ball game, sensing a little bit of a run by the Redbirds. Very good timeout by Kovaleski as he tries to settle things down. He didn't use any timeouts in that first half, so now obviously you got quite a few to use. Take one early, just try and stop the momentum. Yep. Marquette could have started with a 4-0 run, but that miss yes. by Johnson just really hurt him because DePierre went on the other end and scored right away. So smart timeout here by Kovaleski. He's assisted by Joe Minasali, Mike Hansen, and Quentin Carter. Those are the assistants. They got two student assistants as well. And I would like to also compliment Paul Roop, our studio engineer. He's got the running clock and scoreboard. Again, we're trying to accommodate all viewers on the end as making it a little bit easier on you. So certainly Paul is very proud of the work he did there. We'll just make sure that he hits start and stop on the, on the time. But if not, we'll keep you up to date as we are up to back in action. We don't expect a running clock in this game, that's no. for sure. <laughs> As Meehan snaps off a quick three, that ball is no good. Tipped around as Zach tracks it down, and he saves it just before going out of bounds. Quick lead ahead to Will. Will decides otherwise as Zach gets a quick turn, kick to Domofsky in the corner, long three on the way. Bullseye right in front of the De Pere bench. Nice feed by Zach as he drives, draws, and dishes and hits Domofsky for a three. And we, oh, boy, they got Zach for a block as it looked like he... He had pretty much locked up Minasali there on that drive and hit the floor. Boy, pretty good position. It's a big 50-50 call to make, yes, and sir. it goes Minasali's way. As we are going to a replay on that one. Oh, boy. Not sure on that block. Nevertheless, we're back to live action. As Adams tries crossover, he is cut off by Gabe. Novotny is coming middle, quick kick over to Adams, in front of the Marquette student bench, excuse me, student section, as he's tied up. And they are going to get Gabe for a little bit of a grab as Adams got loose on that drive on the left wing. It's two now against Gabe Herman. You know, DePierre, obviously, they play some of the best defense we've seen. Mm -hmm. But Marquette, when they get threes, they're yeah. pretty good looks. They're just not hitting them. This yep. is probably one of their worst shooting performances of the season, and that's not a time to have mm -hmm. it because DePierre's knocking down everything on the other end. A little bit of a mismatch if you want to call out with Minasali on Herbin. As Gabe may not have the foot strength, but, boy, he really keeps kids in front of him. As that drive was cut off by... Adams threw that one away as Kinziger came away with the tip ball. Smart stop, too. Mm -hmm. It was two on one Marquette. Is there Dumped down set? Will Low feed from John. And Will is good off the point blank opportunity as the Birds starting to stretch this thing out. 39 18, 14 and a half to play here in the ball game. This is the last thing you wanted if mm -hmm. you're Marquette. You needed things to go your way. And there's one roll. Will doing a nice job going straight up as Millen Sali takes the contact and dribbles that one in off the rim. And he is up to 13. Long skip pass to Hogan. He doesn't like it. Zach's going to take that one to the rim. Acrobatic right hand finish over Minasali as he went straight up. Couldn't really do a whole lot with that one as Zach maybe had a few words for him on the way down. And Zach is in double figures with 11. Yeah, that was the problem for Minasali. He came to mm -hmm. help, but he knew he had to be careful. You don't want to pick up a fourth as he nearly lost it there. Will Hornseth sends that one out as Novotny tries to sugarcoat that one with the right hand. And Will said no good. John in transition rims that one out. As Minasali comes away with it. The place would have absolutely lost their mind if John would have hit that one. 
as Domofsky on a nice job stepping over the top of that almost comes away with a steal. Almost came away with Coach as well, who Oof. is right in front of the ball. Thirteen forty to play here in the ball game. As Adams kind of assisting the situation over to Minnesota. As he gets loose tonight, right hand feed gets that one to go off the window. He is a handful, boy. When he gets a little bit of a crease, he is there. Six points in the first four and a mm -hmm. half minutes already of the half. And he's up to 15. And again, he's just a junior, so he's still got next year to play. But, but he doesn't want to go down without a fight tonight. Boy, they had a good look there with Will locked up on Minnesota, and they missed him. Will kind of lost that seal a little bit. John backing down. He's going to try and go up and under it. He loses control of that thing as Hoffman comes away with the loose ball. Nice feed, Minnesota. He's going to go up and get Will right in the chops, and Will's going to pick up that foul. And that is going to be Will's first. Just first. And team third, I believe, yes, team third. As Minnesota is going to head to the line and stock, excuse me, with the clock stopped. 12.56 to play here in the ball game. I like Minasali staying aggressive. Yeah, he's got mm -hmm. three fouls, but offensively he's continuing to attack. That's where he's found the majority of his success. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And his first free throw rims out. Rattles that one in and out. A quick whistle. The scoreboard went black for a second, oh. but it was good to go. And he is good on the second, and he has got a game-high 16 for the Hilltoppers. He's got all seven of their second-half points. Keep that in mind. Zach goes up and lays that one off the backboard. No good. Gabe Herman, Johnny on the spot as he collects that rebound and knocks it in off the window. He is at five. Finally. Yep, yep, Adams, quick hook, and boy, he gets that one to go right in front of the Marquette bench. That is his first bucket of the game. Took him 20 minutes, but he finally is on, and maybe now that he finally saw the ball go through the net, something will click and he can get something going because this offense needs more mm -hmm. than Minnesali right now. Zach, one-hand whip pass over to John. John right back to Zach. Here, just running some offense here. Ooh, quick, almost a quick double there in the corner for John as Hogan's going to pick up the foul. Check that. He's going to draw the foul on uh, Adams. Who's that, on? that was on Adams. Okay. As Ramos is going to check out. Tomofsky inbound backcourt, brings it over the Manitowoc ship logo at half court. Good pump. Yep, John Little shot fake. He's going to go long on that one. Good checkout. Trying to get a number here by Conan. Nice back door by Minasali as Gabe Herman gets his hand on that one and knocks that one out of bounds. 11.35 to play here ball game as Gregory checks in for Domofsky. Birds by 17. Adams' little floater, no good. Oh, that's as, four. Yep. As Minasali up high trying to get a tip on that one, and as he's coming down, John grabbed the rebound, and Minasali got a hold of him, and he is going to pick up his fourth, so he is going to have to come out here with 11 and a half to play in the ball game. That is a careless foul. Mm -hmm. you got to be smarter than that at this point in the game going for a loose ball that yep. you know you aren't going to get it regardless. <laughs> Why put your hand in there? Mm -hmm. And now you question how the offense is going to run without Minasali in. Yep, and this is danger time. Oh, boy, they're going to get Will for three seconds. Yeah, probably, right? We had ball on the left side, swung it to the right, and taken up a little too much real estate in there, so good call. But definitely danger time for Marquette as they really don't have a matchup for Will inside. We'll see if DePierre is able to exploit that. Mian still scoreless. Adams just knocked down that three, and then 
missed the shot mm -hmm. on the last possession. So now who's going to step up? Mm -hmm. That's the question for the Hilltoppers. Adams nice up and under, and he goes a little bit long on that one. As McDevitt collects the rebound, and Will sends that one back as the Birds collect the rebound. Will certainly getting after it on the defensive end. Ooh, a little bit of a hold on Adams on Gregory. Nice curl cut by John. Nothing going out to Zach Will in the corner. He's going to go strong left, lays it up right hand. The big junior got loose on the baseline and finger rolled that one over the top. As he is up to nine as the birds back up 19, 10 and a half to play. Big spacing issues yes. right there as Marquette. I don't really know what Hoffman was Pinpo doing getting that yep. ball. But Pinpoint pass there by Meehan as Gregory had him locked up in the corner. Will doing a good job. Zach on the run out here. He's going to go up right hand, finishes, and we're going to have a timeout Marquette as the Redbirds have rolled this thing up to a 21-point lead here. Nine and a half to play here in the ball game. Much needed timeout from Kovaleski. His team is struggling offensively. Again, seven second half points going mm -hmm. to Minnesota. Picked up his fourth foul just over three minutes ago. Adams has a three, and that's it. I mean, this offense is yeah. nothing without Minasali. And what do you do? Are you going to play him nine minutes with four fouls? That's the question that yep. you got to decide right now. Yep, and we talked about a little bit at halftime. One of the one of the real calling cards that appear this year has been the adjustments that they make out of halftime, right? Um, and certainly as the birds came back a little bit later, Coach Winchester probably making a few extra points of emphasis to lock down, and this is what we need to do. And certainly they have been really on point here in the second half as they have opened up a 21-point lead in the ball game as their defense has just completely taken over anything that Marquette has dialed up as Will has come up big with several blocks on the defensive end that have led to easy runouts. And the Redbirds are in, hate to say it, but they're in somewhat control here, up 21. Just trying to find maybe some other scores going on around the Division One. It looks like Arrowhead, as of a little bit ago, was leading Milwaukee Hamilton 77-54. That was sectional mm -hmm. three. And then Kettle Moraine and Franklin. We'll try and find that one as well. I think that one might tip at four, if I remember correctly. That, this is the one o'clock one. There's another oh, okay. one that tips at four. Kettle Moraine up by 10 with two minutes left to go, so it seems like they'll punch their ticket to state. Long three on the way by Hoffman. No good as John collects up to his brother Zach. Run out right hand again. Looks are coming pretty easy now as the Birds take advantage of Marquette having to crash the offensive glass. Zach is up to 15. Eight second half points, four straight for him as Hornseth has another. Woo! Hoffman looking like he had an easy deuce as Will came weak side to knock that one out of bounds. I believe that might be four blocks here in the second half for Will. Nothing official. Long three on the way by Adams. No good as that thing is crooked as Gregory comes away with it. They're just throwing things up now, and Coach Kovaleski has seen enough. Minnesota going to check back in. Yep. I mean, it's this kinda, is risky, mm -hmm. but it, it's all or nothing. Yeah, it's do or, die, do or die right now. Marquette's offense has just not looked good today. Obviously, you can give a lot of credit to the Piers' defense. Mm -hmm. They've played a big part in that, but also Marquette's just plain missing shots. Just under nine here to play in the game as Zach got doubled from behind. As Hoffman came and tipped that one away, it could have led to an easy run out, but he knocked it out of bounds. We're going to have mass substitutions here for, for Marquette as Novotny, Minasali, and I believe Johnson all check in. Birds by 23, 840 to play in this sectional final. Hmm. He had Will on a pin and could not get it to him. Yeah. 
Pierce playing smart right now. Yep. They're just passing. Yep. They're running offense. Mm -hmm. so they're not going to force anything. They're just going to take time off the clock, get a good look, and then move forward and play some good D. Closing on eight here to play in the ball game. Redbirds taking a little arrow out of this thing as John gets a curl cut. He goes up strong right hand. Acrobatic finish by the six-foot senior, and he is 16. up to 16. Thank you. <laughs> as Minasali overlays on that opportunity, Will comes away with it, and he's going to bring that one up himself as he lays off to Zach as he crosses the timeline. 7.40 to play in this sectional final. Birds by 25. There's a Ooh, hole yep. down low, but they're not going to call it. Zach was looking to dump down to John, and it looked like maybe Johnson had a hold of his arm, and yeah. that ball goes out of bounds. Turnover that, Redbirds, yeah. Winchester arguing that as well. That mm -hmm. would have been Johnson's fourth, but yep. they didn't call it, and that's a turnover. Masali on the start and stop, and oh, he's going to. That's John's fourth. John's going to get called for a little bit of a hand check out on top as he picks up his fourth. Gabe's going to check in for John. As he grudgingly walks off the floor, he would just love to just stay out there and grind it out. But That was kind of the same way Minasali mm -hmm. picked up his fourth, just kind of those little kind of careless little, you stick the arm in, try and get something. As Gregory holds his own. As Navani a little bit long on that opportunity, Gabe Herman comes away with it. Oh, he touched that one off the glass, and in it goes, but Novotny misses, and that's been the story all day for Marquette. As we are closing in on seven minutes to play here in the ball game, quick look inside, ball tipped away by Minasali. As Mian comes away with it, over to Novotny, run down the lane, long, excuse me, a little bit off on that left-hand opportunity, Will providing the dress as Gregory comes away with the rebound, and Zach's going to walk it up the floor. Closing in on six and a half to play here. Quick double out on top by Domofsky. Zach Wiggles loose, dump off to Will, and he's going to back that thing out. Zach's going to find the dump off there. No good as they're going to get a timeout as things kind of came, came unraveled with that pass that got tipped en route to Will, and the Birds are going to call a timeout here. Certainly a good... Good time out by Coach Winchester as he saw that thing coming loose. That is going to be their second of the game. They've got three left. Each team has three timeouts as I believe he took a 30. Might as well call it, right? Mm -hmm. Horn Seth on the ground. You obviously bet. can't get up or you travel. So yep. even though you're up, even though you're winning this game, you just want to sure. make sure everyone keeps their composure, stays in it. Just tell them now, run your offense, do your thing. And if you're Marquette, this is a good timeout mm -hmm. for you also. Try and regroup a little bit. Make sure the guys aren't having their heads down. Make sure they're staying in it. Make sure they're fighting until the very end because as they go back right now, there are a lot of heads down and players feeling defeated, which is the last thing you want if you're Coach Kovaleski. Jordan Lorenz digging into the psychology of basketball. Nice job, Jordan. Try my best. <laughs> Birds will be in a box set underneath their own basket. And I hate to say it, but maybe we're just looking at their 50 looking to score as maybe they'll just look to get layups here at this point. Certainly not in any any uh, need to, to get things going a little bit quicker. Just as we see that Hogan to Gregory in the corner, long three on the way. Got it! Right in front of the Redbird bench as Price Gregory lights one up from distance. That's his first triple of the game as the Birds are now up 28 54 26, 550 to play here in the ball game. I mean the Redbirds put up 76 points a game, mm -hmm. but they're cruising right now as that's gonna be a foul. Ooh. As Novotny is gonna pick uh, check that as Meehan's gonna pick up the fouls. Looks like Gregory had nothing but ball on that one, but the trail official decided to call a little bit of contact on that. It's the second time tonight the mm -hmm. official up at the three point line instead of the one on the block yep. has made that call. Meehan, pretty good free throw shooter, 80% from the year, and he rolls that one in and out. He has not scored tonight. That is absolutely huge. He has 34 points and yep. 16 rebounds in the first three playoff games, averages almost 12 a game. He is a big old goose egg. Not anymore. And he, yep, he splits them. 5.45 to play. Redbirds, 54, Marquette, 27. 
Ooh. Gregory thought about the trigger there. I'm sure Coach Winchester is glad that he didn't shoot that. As Domofsky is going to pick up the foul as Adams gets called on the reach around. Just two against Adams now. And that is their fourth team if math as Dan Van Stratton is trying to be a spotter here as he's trying maybe a little bit better angle. Looking, I, I think, he's, I the think he's got the worst angle. <laughs> maybe he's got the worst. Dump down to Will as he reverse pivots, comes middle lane, and he just plain old throws that one away. It's a good read by Johnson. Yep, as Johnson comes away with it. Long three on the way as Domofsky looks like he got a piece of that one. He wanted the long pass too, mm -hmm. but Horn says just wasn't looking. Zach's going to bring it between the circles on top, give to Gregory right side in front of the pier bench over to Domofsky. Grabs and holds. Reverse his dribble as he's going to bring it over to Zach, back to Hogan as we're at 440 to play here. 54-27 to pier in complete control of this sectional final from Manitowoc. I mean, if Marquette's losses, they were losing by single digits. Mm -hmm. They lost by eight. They lost by four. They lost by nine. Then they lost by ten as we're going to have a foul here. They also lost yeah. by five and 14. But that 14-point loss was to Arrowhead. So yeah. throw that out the window. Marquette hasn't lost bad all year. They've only lost six times, and that was by yep. a combined 50 points. So, I mean, you do the math, that's about eight a game. And I combined the records of their opponents they faced, and they lost to 116 and 41. Mm -hmm. So they're only losing to the best of the best, and three of the six teams they lost to, they beat. So, I mean, this is a very good Marquette, Marquette team. Obviously, they got past Fond du Lac, who was the two seed. I feel like a lot of people were looking forward. At, oh, boy, following out. Yeah, Adams had the foul before, and Minnesali just picks up his fifth. So their leading scorer on the year, the 6'5 junior, is going to fall out with 16 points. As Marquette is going to be certainly a team to be reckoned with next year as they return 80% of their starting lineup. So they will definitely create some problems next year as Minasali falls out with 16 and really just kind of went in spurts with him. He never really got on track, uh, kind of scored maybe in, in little micro bunches, but uh, certainly the did a great job of getting up on him and, and you know playing some really, really good defense in the half court. Novotny and Tantney are really the only seniors mm -hmm. from Marquette who we've called their names quite a bit. Obviously, Novotny the most. But other than that, six of the 17 players are seniors. They're still, like you said, going to bring a lot of people back. There's a kickball. They're going to be good next year. Yep. As John is going to check in for Price Gregory, as we are just under four as the, as the clock has not changed much, 54-27. Birds will be in the bonus here with the next foul on Marquette. 356 to play here officially, 5427 to Pierre. Look at this, a lot of Marquette people mm -hmm. starting to leave. That's a long drive back home. And they're already sensing like this one's out of reach. Well, as John gets tied up and checked Travel. out. Oh boy. Not really 100 percent sure on that opportunity as he got body checked a couple of times, did not blow the whistle. Uh oh. And they ended up uh -oh. pulling him for a technical warning. Okay. Yeah. The officials just need to really tone it down at this point with a 27-point lead. They missed one right out in front big time. He had a couple opportunities to call a foul, did not blow the whistle on that one. And definitely Coach Winchester had every right to question that call. And the official gave them a bench warning right now. So it's going to be irrelevant at this point. Three and a half to play here. Birds up 27. Marquette can empty the bench at the next dead ball. Four new guys getting ready to come in. It's Cohen with a long three, no good. As the birds collect that miss. John kind of perusing what's going on. A little quick dive into the lane and dribbles that thing back out as we're closing on three minutes to play here in the ball game. We'll see what new numbers come in from our cap, yep. but I expect mostly seniors. Let them have one last ride. As Cohen picks up a foul, and Domofsky's going to head the line for a couple of, excuse me, for a bonus opportunity. All right, so we got Cal Nimmer, 6'1 senior, checking into this game. 
Uh, I missed the other number, but Daniel Tanney, 5'11", senior, 6'7", senior, Andrew Penkos, and Trey Cody, 5'9", a senior, as Zach takes a seat as well to a big ovation. As, as jo check that. Yeah, Zach is going to check out, and looks like the official and Coach Winchester are making up there on the sideline. So as Domofsky knocks down the first, 2.57 to play here. Birds by 28. And he rattles that one front and back. No good. Seven points tonight for mm -hmm. Domofsky. As Pankos comes away with the rebound on that last missed opportunity. Never a little spin dribble. He's going to go glass. No good. As Domofsky's check. Yes, Domofsky's going to come away with that one. He gives to John on the right side. Ramos and Wicker going to come in mm -hmm. for DePierre. Two and a half to play here in the ball game. Quick slip by John as Gabe finds him and John goes window and he's up to a game high 18. Good pump. Yep. Nice pump fake by Piankos as he knocks down his first bucket, the big 6'7 senior. Has he got Will to commit? James Dorchester and Zach Kane also going to come in for the pier. As we are closing in on two minutes to play here in the ball game. And Trey Plos as well. That'll empty the bench. If this bucket goes in, I would expect a substitution timeout. Oh, as they're going to take it here. A, yep, we do have a substitution timeout. As John Kinzinger, Gabe Herman, Hogan Domofsky... And Will Hornseth check out as they are putting the finishing touches on a dominant performance here by the DePure Redbirds as they are going to cruise to the sectional win and punch their ticket to the state tournament next Friday and hopefully Saturday for the Redbirds. Of the starters for DePierre, Johnny led the way, 18 points, 15 points for Zach, 9 for Hornseth, 7 for Domowski, and 5 for Herman. Also, Price Gregory has 3 as well. That makes up all 57 in this game. Mm -hmm. Colin Wicker, the big 6'5", junior. Controlling things out on top as Ramos centers it. As we are closing out, one minute to play. <laughs> Double as steal. As Pankos, yeah, gets his mitts on that one. To appear wanting someone to well, shoot. Well, I tell you, Zach Kane doesn't pass up a lot of shots. He's in there. Dorchester, a little flip and fade, no good. As Tanti comes away with it, leave off to Pankos. Oh. As he goes up, tries a two-hand oh. dunk, and back rims that one. He wanted it. Yep, as we're going to have another substitution. I do have finals as well from the other state games. Arrowhead and Kettle Moraine have punched their ticket to state. Arrowhead took down Milwaukee Hamilton 93-72, and Kettle Moraine handled Franklin at 63-53. So now we just await the one other team other than De Pere, which is at 4 o'clock. That'll be Superior playing Nina. There you go. Redbirds fans. Get your hotel reservation set. Jordan's Big Ten Bub. Get yourself a Euro at Parthenon's. Dottie's, the Great Dane. What else? State Street Brats, Mickey's Dairy Bar, the Plaza Burger. Get all of your eateries lined up. So the Redbirds are going to be heading to the state tournament. 40 seconds to play here in the ball game. To pure student subs. section just politely mild at this point. I figured they would be... Oh, you wait until Coming that final. out finer. of their minds here right now. Once that final buzzer sounds. There also are rules after mm -hmm. state games. You can't go on the court. We'll see if they hold true to that. It's long three on the way by Cody. Comes no good as Dayton Ellingson comes away with it, and he brings it over to the timeline. <laughs> as we've got a tip ball as Cody comes away with that right hand. And Pankos on the tip, no good follow. 
as I believe, oh, jumped on that one on the ground. Looks like Bunkelman jumped on it, and we're going to have a jump ball. Student section isn't mild anymore. The student section serenading the Marquette student section. We are at 10. The De Pere Redbirds have punched their ticket to the Division I State Basketball Tournament in Madison next week with a convincing 57-29 win over the Marquette Hilltoppers. As Coach Winchester returns with the Redbirds for the first time since 2011 in that triple overtime loss to Madison Memorial as the Redbirds dominant today in the sectional final over Marquette. A little lower scoring than what we anticipated, but the Birds cruise to the 28-point win over Marquette. Jordan, we're going to leave leading scores and all that stuff aside. What are your final thoughts here as we check out for Manitowoc? I think you hit it. That was actually a lot lower scoring than we expected. Only putting up 57 for it appear. They don't do that often, but they're headed to state. And really, that's all that matters. They finally made it over the sectional final hump after losing back-to-back -back seasons now. It's all about the boys getting to go to Madison. And they're going to have to wait a little bit, yep. but they'll be able to get there. they got a good week to rest up, train, get their practice and prep ready. And there they head to the big one, the Cole Center, for, like you said, hopefully two mm -hmm. games. But we'll see what happens with the Redbirds and also what seed they end up getting at state. Right, right. So as we wait for the sectional trophy presentation, they'll give the runner-up to Milwaukee Marquette. As we will stay here live and watch the trophy presentation here for a couple of minutes. Big old smile on Coach Winchester's face down low as he has deserved this one, deserved yep. every bit yep. of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Give a ton of credit to Marquette as well. Getting a seven seed, I'm sure mm -hmm. they would have thought they were going to get higher than that. But, I mean, Coach did a fantastic job with this team. Coach Kowalski, just an overall great, great season. 21-7 and seven they'll finish, which is a great record after they were 11-14, and 10-13, and 11-13. and 13. I mean, they had some very mediocre years, but this was a great year. And tough way to go out for some of the seniors like Cody and Nimmer. And you go down the line, Tanny, Simi. Knacker, Novotny, and Pienkos as well, but they're returning a lot of good players with Minasali coming back. Yep. They got Adams coming back as well, along with Meehan, but that's a big thing. Adams and Meehan did not perform tonight, and the trio just didn't live up to the expectation. Not even the duo, you could say, with Adams and Minasali. Minasali played his heart out before he fouled out eventually. Yeah, yeah. Again, going through the individual awards for Milwaukee Marquette, and certainly De Pere, um, I'm not saying that the outcome was in doubt, but certainly a uh, little bit of duress here in the first half as John picked up, again, we said three fouls, and you certainly take your leader out of the game, but, uh, boy, they steadied the chip and kind of weathered that, uh, that halftime lead and, and came out just focused and dialed in here and just blew this game open here early in the second half, again, as they cruised to that 28-point win. And again, this, this field house has not been kind to the Redbirds uh, from a historical perspective as they've had some tough matchups in here with Germantown. Uh, back when that run happened, they had some dominant teams, and De Pere certainly had some awesome talent back then, uh, but they could not get over the hump um, with some of those Germantown teams. And certainly the uh, return trip since 2011 is very much... Uh, long, I guess, anticipated, and, and uh, the Redbirds certainly have been dominant with the exception of maybe one or two ball games. West appear, um, they struggled with, again, a little bit in the first game. They ended up pulling away by, I believe it was 15, and then also, obviously, Pewaukee, who's a very good team. Uh, they battled with them, I believe, a seven-point win at home, and then yep. the, the big-time battle with Wisconsin Lutheran. And uh, But other than that, appear has just been locked and loaded for every game and any type of adjustments that they've had to make here during halftime, they have come out and just absolutely crushed teams in the second half and today certainly distancing themselves by 28 as they have really done a great job here just listening and, and believing in each other and certainly the proof is in the pudding with Coach Winchester and all the work that he and his staff has done. A fantastic booster club as the Redbirds are getting their individual medals the sectional championship 
Athletic Director Jeff Bizek handing those out at half court. Those two games you mentioned with Lutheran, Wisconsin mm -hmm. Lutheran and Pewaukee, those are the only ones in single digits all year. That's how crazy it was. Yeah. I told it out. Their average margin of victory, 31.5 yeah. points a game. I mean, it just shows how well this team yep. plays, how head and shoulders they are above every other team they played this season, yeah. dominated the conference, basically dominated everyone they played, and 28-0 on their way to state, hoping to make it 30-0 yep. to end the year. Yeah, you know, and, and one other kid that, that we didn't really mention a whole lot, Ben Willingans, a 6'7 um, junior. He's been injured probably since eh, Christmas, maybe a little bit after. He's been having a few knee issues. Um, he has not played in, in uh, you know, probably a month and a half, maybe longer, um, and I believe he's going to have to have a little bit of work done on his knee, but certainly we'll get him back for next year as um, the Redbirds will be will certainly lose some key pieces, right? Gabe Herman and, and uh, John Kinzinger, but they return uh, a lot of firepower next year, and we'll see where that, that plays out. Tomofsky, another senior mm -hmm. on this team that they're going to be missing, but they got guys Gregory coming back. Yep. Obviously, Hornseth will have one more year, mm -hmm. and then the Zach, like you said, those two. <laughs> There's the plaque. As we've got the plaque, is they're going to give it to, not really sure, they're looking around. All right. Caleb Dietschy's going to grab and says, I'll do it as you're holding <laughs> up that sectional plaque high as the DePue Redbirds advance to the Division I state tournament in Madison next Friday. I would suspect a 635 start being the number one seed. Other than that, it's been a pleasure bringing you Redbird basketball this year. For Paul Roop, our studio engineer, Jordan Lorenz, color, myself, Mark Mino, it has been an absolute pleasure. Again, the DePue Redbirds punch their ticket to the state tournament with a big time win over Marquette today, 57-29. Have a safe and enjoyable Saturday and thank you.